Oh boy, I got some video coming up for you next. They were described as about as Tennessee country as country gets. To see the full length video of the mini excavator aerobatics and also RV park installation electrical, just stay tuned and sit right there. It's coming. Hi, this is Kama Choi coming to you from Linden Camp, located five minutes southeast of Linden, Tennessee. I have a different hat on today because it's uh, February 1st. It's down into the 20s. We got some freezing rain yesterday when I'm recording this section for, um, for these videos. These videos were actually recorded back in October of last year. So I'm just adding some additional uh, color to it. So you can see some of the, the pretty ice on the trees behind me. So now this, uh, this video is actually a part of a, a four part series. Um, the first part is putting in um, primary electrical uh, trenching for RV sites. Uh, the second part is uh, connecting up the service for the meter base and breaker panels and all the circuits and all that. Um, the third part is going to be uh, running, or the third part is running the actual RV sites and getting those hooked up. And then lastly, the last part is uh, having the local electric company come on out and actually energize everything. So pretty exciting. This is part one of the series where we're going to show some underground trenching for primary wire. And we're going to do that underground. We're going to be talking about some terms, primary, secondary, transformers. And if you haven't uh, you know, heard those terms before, um, I've linked a video up here on the top where you can go and um, where I explain what primary is and secondary and transmission lines. I'd recommend you go and you know, watch that first before you, you know, watch this video just to get familiar with the terms. If you're already familiar with the terms, then carry on. So have, if you haven't clicked on that video to find out what primary is, I'm just going to take just a couple seconds to just explain it real quickly so you don't have to watch the whole video. <clears throat> you know, those wires that uh, run down the side of the road from electric pole to electric pole to electric pole? Those are called primary wire, and they're high-voltage wire. Here in Linden, Tennessee, ours are 14,400 volts. So that's how they um, transmit the power over long distances. Now, as a, a landowner, if you have a, a deep property, you also may need to you know, transmit power over long distances or provide a lot of power. So you can actually extend those primary wires that go down the road into your property. So that's exactly what we're doing here today in this video. We're gonna take that 14,400 volts, we're gonna uh, connect right up to it in um, part four of the series. And we're gonna run that uh, 14,400 volts down the length of our property and then, and then tap into it with transformers where we need service. So we kind of have our own little like electric company grid here. Well, it's not really a grid because if one part goes out, it's like Christmas lights. If one part goes out, they all go out. So not a grid, but it's, uh, it's, it's kind of cool stuff. So that's how, what you need to do if you're going to do an RV park is you need to bring um, the high voltage primary wire into your property. And that's what we're doing here today. In this video, I'm not really detailing the process to get electricity on your property. That's actually in a different video, uh, you know, linked, actually linked before. Um, you know, did you hear me talking about a video before you should click on the RV pole installation? In that video, and you might have to go back in the video a little bit, but in that video, I actually described the um, start to finish process of getting um, electrical service on your property. So this process for underground, um, Electrical is, is very similar. You know, it starts with meeting with the, with the engineer and, and planning out the project. So not gonna cover any of that in this video, but you know, go and, and check out that other video if that's something you're interested in. 
with that, let's get uh, let's get right into this uh, this first uh, content. Hi, this is Comet Troy coming to you from Linden Camp, five minutes southeast of Linden, Tennessee. Well, I've been getting lucky again with uh, contractors. I found a contractor to dig this uh, ditch here for electric. I had uh, Eddie from Electric Company out here on Tuesday. It's uh, Monday, so six days later, and I'm getting a, a ditch dug for, for primary electric. So pretty excited about that. And let me tell you something, incredible, these guys. They, they literally showed up and within two minutes, they were digging. They were starting to dig this trench. I couldn't believe it. And I'm not just exaggerating the two minutes, like, you know, it was 10 minutes, it seemed like two. No, I went back and actually looked at the timestamps on the video files and watched these guys. They, they showed up on the property, parked, unloaded, and were digging within two minutes. <laughs> Incredible. So super impressed with these guys so far. Um, that started at 118 today and we are now about an hour and a half in and they've pretty much got this first 200 feet of uh, ditch already dug. Incredible. It's uh, three foot wide so we got some flexibility with what we're going to put in it. So I found out that the company's skid steer was down and that's one of the reasons why they were able to do some trenching because you don't use a skid steer for trenching. But I had a couple of areas where I need some chert to be built up for certain things. And I asked the owner, I said, so I'm a little confused. You guys are going to come in here and bring in some chert and spread it out and pack it down and all that. He says, yeah. I says, how are you going to do that without a skid steer? He said, just watch this boy on this, on this uh, mini, mini excavator. He can work magic. So that's about ready to start. We've had a, we've had a couple of those of chert delivered now. So I'm gonna go and, and check that out. So things are going along pretty well here. So behind me, they're making the transformer pad. They brought in some chert to get it off the driveway. I didn't really want the, the transformer right on the edge of the driveway where it could get hit. So we brought some chert in and are building up a, a little pad and that will be connected up to the main ditch behind me. So I launched the drone here to give you an over or an overhead view of the primary um, conduit that we did lay. It's three feet down on the ground. It starts at the pole at the road. And we had to cut the corner of where the building's going to go here. You, you know, you want to try to avoid that as much as possible. We couldn't in our case because just the way the building's going to go all the way across the front of the property. Uh, and then you'll see a guy here working on the uh, first transformer location. And then the conduit continues from that first transformer location to a second transformer location, which will go right about here. They're working on the rest of the trench or the rest of the conduit, and then um, the conduit will terminate back here in the woods so I can build on to that in future phases. Oh boy, I got some video coming up for you next. Now let me tell you, these guys were, when they were recommended to me from uh, another local here in town, they were described as about as Tennessee country as country gets. So... I think this next video will will prove that. I think you'll agree. Now, just let me just, uh, you know, put a little bit of warning out there. These are professionals. Do not try this at home. This is uh, not what you want to be doing. We are not condoning this in any way. Do not do this. I repeat, do not do this. You know, it's uh, you've been warned. So check this out. Do it again.
Isn't that just crazy? Yeah, these guys just had a little bit of time to uh, to goof off, and it's uh, kind of scary and kind of cool at the same time. I'm not sure which one I feel about it, but hey, nobody got hurt. Again, these are professionals. Do not try this at home. There's more video coming in this video. I just wanted to take a, a moment, and if you like that, uh, I call them the excavator aerobat aerobatics. Please like, subscribe, ring the bell, make some comments, and let me know what you think. And let's get right on with the rest of our video. So we're on day two of the electrical installation. You can see behind me here, we got some trenching going on to uh, put up the services. The primary trench has been done already and it uh, didn't take them very long. They started yesterday at one o'clock, worked for three to four hours yesterday. Got here this morning at around nine and finished the trench. About by noon, went and got some sticks of three inch conduit. I uh, already have that laid in. It's about, uh, I don't know, two or three o'clock now. And now we're working on the, the service trenches to go from the primary to the uh, various locations behind me. And it, everything is moving along very quickly. I'm very excited. Well, look at this. We got two excavators going on at the same time. Dueling excavators, maybe? I hear banjos. Dig faster. I don't know. Pretty cool. Well, it looks like the three inch uh, pipe for the primary wire has all been laid. Probably about 500 feet. I got word that it's about $6,000 worth of, of plastic pipe. It's just ridiculous with supply chain issues and all that going on. But it is what it is. And we got uh, three inch pipe laid here. I'm standing at at the spot where a transformer will go. I've heard that those have are been delayed, you know, over a year. So, but I'm still putting in the infrastructure in the ground. So when we do get one, we don't have to open everything back up and retrench everything. And then it, it goes on behind this, uh, or past this second transformer base, back into the woods behind me. And, uh, We'll walk back there and see. So here I am behind the, the big turnaround area. I'm past it, about 500 feet off the ground. I got the, the north fork behind me, I'm calling it. The south fork is, is over that way. And what we're gonna do is have the, the three inch terminate about here. We're not gonna do a sweeping elbow to bring it above ground, because I'm not exactly sure you know where a transformer is going to go or a junction box or whatnot. So we're just going to feather the three inch uh, above ground here. So when we do add on, we can just tack on to here and not disturb the front of the, the property. You can see the trench behind me. It just uh, looks like they're maybe uh, one or two sticks short. So they'll have to go get those and, and add on here, I guess. So exciting. Things are happening here. This here is uh, schedule 83 inch, it's thicker, and that's what you put underneath driveways. So that's why it's a, a, a blue color instead of gray. And that's gonna go from the meter base over to the transformer on the other side of the driveway over there. Well, it's actually gonna go through over here, but they just have it sitting here out of the way, so. Now we're going to take the drone up to about 400 feet to give you more of a bird's eye view of the trench. It starts there again at the road, at the power pole. And then about in the middle of the screen is where the first transformer is going to go by that first clump of trees. The second transformer is going to go back by that truck near that second clump of trees. Now I actually recorded this drone footage near the end of October when this work was done and got some pretty uh, fall colors in here as well. Now here's the drone video coming back the other way from deep into the property back towards the road. Just another perspective on, you know, what the trench looks like and uh, where my RV is sitting is where my um, RV garage is going to go. And then, you know, the primary trench is going to kind of cut the corner of that a little bit. 
don't really like that, but it is what it is. And then finally, you know, up to the pole here where it uh, connects up to the power. So they had to bring in a smaller excavator to get between those two trees behind me. So I wasn't very partial to them. They could have taken them down, but as you know, long as they got the, the smaller excavator getting between them, looks like it fits pretty perfectly to me. Well, here we are in a little bit of a break. The track came off of the excavator. They got it back on. I saw some grease dripping out of it. And now we're looking for some three inch sweeps. Damn supply chain. Everything's on back order and hard to get. So it's kind of a scavenger hunt looking for parts sometimes. What do you guys think? I think it's a problem not having the material that we need. Yeah. <laughs> So I made good progress on trenching and putting pipe. Um, we couldn't find any one and a half inch and one inch. So I'm here at, uh, at Lowe's picking up some just before closing. So that should be a lot of uh, enough conduit to finish the communication lines and, and uh, other circuits. Well, this is Comet Troy, and we got approved. Our primary trenching got approved, and we're starting to bury it. So you can see the track hole behind me burying the ditch. It's kind of cool how he's uh, straddled both tracks across the ditch. And and you know, we're leaving it. Um, I guess maybe 12 inches, 18 inches for electric and uh, some sewer lines. So we're going to have the electric, the electric, uh, the primary wires on one side of the three foot ditch and the sewer line will go on the other side of the three foot ditch. So things are coming along. It's looking good. I really hope you enjoyed our comment. You know what to do. Ring the bell, comment, like, and of course, subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.